Circa, uh, really, really happy uh, with the start. Uh, starting out 1-0 against a uh, Big 12 opponent. Happy for our players. Coaches worked really hard, put a lot of time and uh, effort into that, so very happy. Uh, it's also really excited uh, to see our fans show up in Houston. I, I love the turnout uh, for Rebel Nation. Uh, really fun uh, after the game to see our players and our fans interacting together. I thought there was a lot of energy uh, provided from our fans, so really excited about that. Uh, some of the positives uh, coming out of the game uh, were obvious with Scotty Phillips. Really happy to see him get off to that start. I've been uh, excited about what I've seen with him through spring and uh, in fall camp, but happy to see him have that type of start. Uh, Jordan looked very comfortable and uh, spreading the ball out to all the receivers, so that was, that was really positive. I thought the O-line protected and played really well, had a couple of breakdowns, uh, but, uh, but for, for the most part, they played really good. Defensively, I thought our communication was better. Uh, I saw a lot of communication coming from the senior safeties to our linebackers. I thought that was better after watching the tape with the confidence and the, uh, and the retention was good. Uh, from the kicking game, really pleased with Luke Logan, you know, in his first time starting, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a very, uh, I guess, a big environment, uh, he did really, really well. Uh, some of the improvements I thought we need to make, uh, red zone offense, when we get down there, we got to score points. Uh, we had opportunities, we just got to make plays down there. I didn't think it was anything schematically, I just think it's us executing and, and making the plays that are there to be made. Uh, defense getting off the field on third down. I thought that was um, that was a big thing for us. There's a couple times we had opportunities to get off the field on third down uh, that would uh, eliminate long scoring drives. So I think third down uh, and then fitting our runs a little bit better. Just our run fits. We had some a, a few of our run fits we need to clean up, especially in the red zone. We just had some uh, some MAs there. Uh, thought obviously the kickoff return was a positive, but there was some kickoff coverage breakdown. We had nine or ten kickoff coverages. I think we got to clean up some areas there. So, uh, but o overall, good win. It's always, uh, you always make your biggest improvement from game one to game two, but uh, it, it's good to be able to do that in, in a win. Uh, coming out injury situation, um, uh, the, mo the, the biggest injury, um, Jalen Jones, um, he, he does have a torn ACL. We got the uh, uh, MRI back. He'll have surgery on Friday. Uh, so our, our Thoughts and prayers go out to him. He had a uh, phenomenal uh, camp and just had worked really hard. So um, that, that that was one to be to, to note. Uh, Kevontae Ruggs is in the concussion protocol, um, and so he'll be day to day. And that's the same with um, with Demarcus Lodge. Reported some uh, symptoms <coughs> yesterday morning, so Demarcus Lodge will also be in the concussion protocol. He'll be he'll be day to day. Sean Rawlings had a, a, a shoulder and a knee. But, uh, but he'll be probably, I think, uh, I would look for him to play. And, and this probably be limited so in practice this week, but, but we'll play. Um, moving on, uh, really excited to get home. Uh, home openers were great. Just uh, fired up to get back in the Grove and play in front of our home fans. And uh, excited about that, excited about the challenge with, uh, with Southern Illinois. Had a big win over Murray State, 49 to 10. Um, pretty impressive to get, in time to get six turnovers. Uh, and three for scores. It's very, very impressive. Have a senior quarterback, really good running back. Have a uh, wide receiver, Rafael Leonard, from uh, from here in Mississippi. So I'm, I'm sure he'll be fired up and need to be ready to go. But uh, excited for the challenge. Excited to be back home. All right, raise your hand if you have any questions. We'll bring the microphone to you. All right, who wants to go first? Sure, you spoke to some of the recruits there at the game. What was their reaction to the excitement when the game and the and y'all? Uh, no, it's so September first is the first day that we can actually send out texts to uh, 2020 recruits, and the first time we're able to actually call the 19 recruits. So anytime you know on a big win, you're able to you know text and call and try to capitalize on that momentum. But there was a lot of positive feedback, a lot of positive feedback on the white uniforms. Uh, a lot of positive feedback from you know it was just it was, just, it was good to get the to get that win and get that momentum going early. But yeah, a lot of positive feedback from crew. Man, it looked like the defense coming off the field was excited about what they were doing. There's a lot of enthusiasm where maybe last year they were hanging their heads and not this confident. But did you feel that as also? I, I did, and it's funny that you mentioned that in the team meeting yesterday. Um, I think you could tell a lot by a team when you watch the sideline, and you could tell who's into it, who's not. 
uh, we had a one third down stop where we paused and the defense was on the sideline. They were jumping around and just they were into it. So I think that was good. There was another play I, uh, when Lodge uh, cracked back when uh, A.J. Brown had the ball. You could see Eric Sweeney uh, on the sideline just fired up and into it. And that, that to me was maybe my favorite play just because you see a guy that's had so much uh, adversity but still being into it and being fired up for his teammates. I was uh, excited to, to see that. Matt, you spoke in the offseason about the depth of the secondary with uh, Jalen being out now. Uh, two things. One, are you still as comfortable loading the box to help stop the run? And uh, who are candidates? What might that uh, rotation look like? Well, you know, I think the, with the emergence of Kebron Smith, uh, he, he played a bunch on special teams and got in some. I think he'll have to he'll have to fill a role there, but I still feel comfortable with Miles Hartsfield and Jay Ham, and then we'll get uh, Webster coming back full strength. Uh, then you have Kebron. Uh, so I, I think I do think we have a, a lot of people that are capable there. It, the, the, the where it hurts us the most is Jalen was able to come back and play safety if we had some injuries there. That, that's where it maybe hurts us a little bit more with our uh, flexibility more so than just our, our corner depth. But uh, Jalen Julius played really good in the game, so really happy to see that. So we are we are pretty deep at corner, so that helps there. But we got, we're going to have to figure out, you know, if something, if injuries do occur, what happens with safety, that will probably be Miles Hartsfield, you know, moving back into that into that area. So nothing changes with loading the box and doing some things like that? No, still we still feel very comfortable where we are, and I, and I think – I think the guys they go against every day in practice gives you that confidence to be able to do that. Do you go with uh, Elijah Moore, kickoff return, and, and uh, Jalen's play? Yeah, so uh, Elijah Moore, and then you may see Tyler Knight, but Elijah Moore will be there at kickoff and punt return to start with. No Braylon. Mm -hmm. No Braylon Sanders. Not, not right now. No. Questions? that in the team meeting yesterday, um, I think you can tell a lot by a team when you watch the sideline. And you can tell who's into it, who's not. Uh, we had a one third down stop where we paused and the defense was on the sideline. They were jumping around and just they were into it. So I think that was good. There was another play I, when Lodge uh, cracked back when uh, A.J. Brown had the ball. You could see Eric Sweeney uh, on the sideline just fired up and into it. And that, that to me was maybe my favorite play just because you see a guy that's had so much uh, adversity, but still being into it and being fired up for his teammates, I was uh, excited to, to see that. Matt, you spoke in the offseason about the depth of the secondary with uh, Jalen being out now. Uh, two things. One, are you still as comfortable loading the box to help stop the run? And uh, who are candidates? What might that uh, rotation look like? Well, you know, I think the, with the emergence of Kebron Smith, uh, he, he played a bunch on special teams and got in some. I think he'll have to he'll have to fill a role there, but I still feel comfortable with Miles Hartsfield and Jay Ham, and then we'll get uh, Webster coming back full strength. Uh, then you have Kebron. Uh, so I, I think I do think we have a, a lot of people that are capable there. It, the, the, the where it hurts us the most is Jalen was able to come back and play safety if we had some injuries there. That, that, that's where it maybe hurts us a little bit more with our uh, flexibility more so than just our, our corner depth. But uh, Jalen Julius played really good in the game, so really happy to see that. So we are we are pretty deep at corner, so that helps there. But we got, we're going to have to figure out, you know, if something, if injuries do occur, what happens with safety, that'll probably be Miles Hartsfield, you know, moving back into that into that area. So nothing changes with loading the box and doing some things like that? No, still we still feel very comfortable where we are, and I, and I think – I think the guys they go against every day in practice gives you that confidence to be able to do that. Do you go with uh, Elijah Moore, kickoff return, and uh, Jalen's play? Yeah, so uh, Elijah Moore, and then you may see Tyler Knight, but Elijah Moore will be there at, at kickoff and punt return to start with. No Braylon. Mm -hmm. No Braylon Sanders. Not, not right now. No. Questions? I thought your star position played very well. Custis, who's really not been a factor for two years and all of a sudden he is, and, and Dasher, speak about that position. Uh, yeah, I was asked about that after the game, you know, whatever, what, what, what was uh, Custis. I think Custis is prepared well. I think he's really grown up a lot. Uh, kind of made a big deal about him changing his number just to get on special teams. It just kind of goes to show how much he's, how much he's grown up as a person, but also the way he prepared. 
and I, I think uh, Vernon Dasher also prepared very well and was able to step in there. They both played a bunch on special teams. Uh, and Vernon being able to get quality reps helped Custa stay fresh in the fourth quarter. He saw him make a big play down there on fourth down. So I think the combination of, of having the depth to be able to play two guys there, but then also the way that uh, he is prepared. How did uh, Ben Brown do in his first start and also how uh, Royce Newman got a lot of time behind Greg and Alan? Yeah, I was, was proud of him that there was some uh, freshman mistakes to be expected. Uh, he was very, very excited early on. Uh, but, but overall, for the, for the first game, he played really, really well, especially being in a big environment away from home. I, I thought he did well. There were, there were some things, obviously, you've got to clean up with him and Royce both. But uh, n nothing glaring. Uh, they, they obviously they look like they fit, and both those guys, I think, have a bright future. And the good thing is they will only get better. Questions? Anything up top? Ordinarily, an FCS game might be a, a game where you can rest some people, but with Cavante having not played much of the game, if he's available, is it important for him to get snaps in this game? Absolutely. I, and again, I, 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 I don't want to try to sound cliche when I say this, but we, we get 12 opportunities together and we want to make each one of them count. There's there's several things that we have to work on getting better and I, and I really want to approach it that way where, where we focus on us and making sure we hold ourselves to a standard. And uh, there, there's a lot of things that we need to get fixed and, and I think that we need to approach it that way. saw him do it in high school too, uh, you know, when I went to watch him play. And, and they, he just has a knack for it. Obviously, obviously he's an athletic guy, but uh, he, he works at it, but he just kind of got a natural feel. Some guys just kind of have that natural hit factor when it comes to returning kicks, and he, he definitely had it. So that was a big momentum swing in the game and a huge part of us uh, in, in the momentum. So it, it, it's, uh, I just, I hate it for him, but I'm uh, really happy he was able to, to make that contribution. That, that's the, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be out with the surgery, but, but you got to be very careful. When guys get injured, they don't get removed from the team. He, he's a big part of this team and a big part of the leadership role in that secondary with the defense. So just, just having him around and, and being there at, for, uh, for moral support, pushing those guys and, and helping be an extra coach on the field. Matt, two things. One, watching some other games back, uh, it seemed like a lot of teams having issues with the mechanics of the game, personnel not on the field when they need to be. Talk about that aspect of this game for you. And, and also, a lot of targeting this past weekend and how you feel that uh, your guys have handled that so far. Yeah, so my, my biggest concern going into the game was the 42nd clock uh, after the kickoffs. Because uh, we have two starters, uh, you know, DK and Dawson Knox, both start on kickoff return. So that's a very fast turnaround. Um, so, but but I think we did a really good job preparing. and We actually went as far as to time it to see how far we would have because you don't want to start your series first and 15 because of the delay of game. So, but I, I thought Coach Longo and the staff did a good job preparing us for that. It's also the case after a uh, after a score, the uh, extra point it happens much much faster. So you have to be prepared and have natural hit factor when it comes to returning kicks, and he, he definitely had it. So that was a big momentum swing in the game and a huge part of us uh, in, in the momentum. So it, it, it's uh, I just I hate it for him, but I'm really happy he was able to. to That, that's the, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be out with the surgery, and, but, but you got to be very careful. When guys get injured, they don't get removed from the team. He, he's a big part of this team and a big part of the leadership role in that secondary with the defense. So just, just having him around and, and being there at, for, uh, for moral support and pushing those guys and, and helping be an extra coach on the field. Matt, two things. One, watching some other games back, uh, it seemed like a lot of teams having issues with the mechanics of the game, personnel, 
not on the field when they need to be. Talk about that aspect of this game for you. And, and also a lot of targeting this past weekend and how you feel that uh, your guys have handled that so far. Yeah, so my, my biggest concern going into the game was the 40-second clock uh, after the kickoffs. Because uh, we have two starters, uh, you know, DK and Dawson Knox, both start on kickoff return. So that's a very fast turnaround. Um, but but I think we did a really good job preparing, and we, we actually went as far as to time it to see how far we would have, because you don't want to start your series first and 15 because of delay of game. So, but I, I thought Coach Longo and the staff did a good job preparing us for that. It's also the case after a uh, after a score, the uh, extra point it happens much much faster. So you have to be prepared for that. If you're celebrating in the far end zone, that clock is running. Uh, so I think we did a good job preparing for that. I was a little interested to see how. Um, the fair catch was gonna was gonna go about. I think uh, it, it provided us a chance for a touchdown by not fair catching. But I think there was one that was three yards deep that we should have fair caught. So I, I think uh, I think some of the new rules were interesting as far as targeting goes. There there were several it seemed like um, you know just even with the, in the Miami LSU game last night and then two in our game. Uh, you know so I think you got to be really aware of your target area. I think, I think it just if it's an emphasis and, and on that and safety, I think you got to be aware of your target area. When you watch the film, did anybody just that maybe you weren't anticipating being a big part? You go, oh, whoa, we might be able to get some help out of this guy. Um, Jacquez Jones showed up <laughs> to me that way. Uh, he seems like he's got a lot of natural football instincts. Um, was very very pleased to see that. Uh, he's probably the one that jumps out to me. Luke Logan being able to, you know, I, I, I knew he would be, uh, I, he's a good kicker, but you just don't know going out there to be, mm -hmm. to be four for four is a good, a good thing. Questions up top? Coach, is there any extra urgency to keep guys on, on schedule, on task with an FCS opponent coming in? And you have a big SEC opener the following week. Yeah, again, I, I think that uh, there's plenty uh, of improvement that we have to make from, from week one to week two. We get 12 opportunities together, uh, and I want to take advantage of each and every one and hold ourselves to a, a certain standard about the way that we perform and put a product on the field that everybody says, hey, I'm, I'm proud to be an Ole Miss Rebel when we watch those guys play. And second, uh, not since Bum Phillips has anyone worn a cowboy hat on the sidelines. Any, any thoughts? Hey, thanks for bringing that up. You know, the fact that we got the win, it was okay. I got a lot of, hey, Matt, great win, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it worked for long. Text, with that text message. Yeah, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no cowboy hat this Saturday. Uh, uh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hat guy. I'm sure that didn't get tweeted out. Oh, uh, no, it did. It well, did. It got sent directly. <laughs> Man, over here. Uh, questions with rugs banged up all week. And, you know, Dietrich being Duke's played a lot. Uh, what, what does that rotation look like from a black man? Though? No, I mean it, it's going to be by committee. You know, Momo played played fairly well. Uh, Dietrich stepped in and did a good a good job. Willie Willie played pretty good, and then you'll see Jack West in there too. So I just think you'll see all four of those guys. And, and again, when one guy goes down, has to step up. Hopefully, we'll get Kamonte back too. Matt, kind of along those lines, how did you think us uh, know that didn't get any people lined up? I know they moved to outside when the rugs went out. For Good. I, I thought, uh, and again, it's hard to tell when when you when you watch a TV copy, but I thought that's one of the things that we did way better than at any time last year was just our communication. There's a lot of communication from the back end to the front end. I thought that uh, that that was a big improvement. I think a lot of that is having the continuity and just being in the second year of the system, but our, our, our communication and the, the signing off that everybody was on, on the same page was much better. Uh, you mentioned with Logan, he was talking to us last week about how he really worked on the mental side of this game. What have you seen throughout the fall? And then on that kick, the 79 yard one where it did try to ice him a little bit. Well, we, we've tried to put him in that situation. We did it the third to before the game, uh, trying to just put him in a situation in front of the whole team that right before he kicks it, you know, call a fake timeout. Just try to put him in that situation as many times as you can. Just, uh, and again, it's not a game situation, but you just try to recreate the moment for him as many times as you can. And I, but I do think that's going to give him a lot of confidence on the mental side going forward. 
Matt Kingsbury said that uh, crime kept him off balance with a lot of different fronts and a lot of different coverages, mixing them up well. Is that the benefit of being second year in the system? Uh, no doubt. I, you know, Texas Tech was a big play offense, with the exception of the one, you know, the great catch to Basher. We did a really good job of keeping the top on the coverage and not giving up, you know, big passes down the field. So we was pleased with that, but he did a good job of mixing up cover three zone, cover two zone. We went to a little bit more cover two to stop the screens. They hit a couple hitches, and I thought Coach McGriff did an outstanding job of making those adjustments to take away the screens and then mixed up enough man to keep them honest. So I think, uh, you know, maybe not getting comfortable as a play caller, but, but, but an outstanding job by Coach McGriff, for sure. Any more questions for Coach? You mentioned Alex Gibbons. What's his status? Uh, he, he was good. Okay. Yeah. He, was good. he did. He got banged up early, uh, or some, sometime in the middle of the game, but he came back and finished. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll I have, appreciate uh, it, guys.